Hello, welcome or welcome back. Today I want to wrap up the last couple of lessons we did together, which were all about turning, to turn the head over one side or the other. Very important thing to be able to do and so pleasant to make it better. So pleasant to make it more smooth, easy, wider, so pleasant to feel the length of the body, the spine while turning. So I have two lessons with turning or twist, the twist, twist to look to the, to the left in side sitting. I have two lessons in side lying and then my latest two were in sitting, sitting on a chair. To twist, or turn is the same movement but in a different relation to gravity. And that's a big thing actually. See, when we bring the twist to different positions, there's always a limitation, like in side sitting, there's a limitation as opposed to sitting on a chair where we have much more freedom. And when we lie down on the left side or on the right side, it's also a limitation because we don't have the freedom of being upright and being able to orient our senses, most of our senses in space so freely. But when we're lying on the side, we are free to explore details we wouldn't be able to catch in sitting. So, um, in this third lesson, which is mainly about sitting, I want to start in sight lying and just like go through a couple of variations. So when you have been practicing with these lessons the, and, and you run out of ideas, so maybe that's a couple of new ideas. Um, yes, as always, you can just watch the video or I encourage you to participate, like to fully engage in the lesson and then you can uh, watch the video a second time to learn the lessons by heart or play with them or uh, come to the video at a later time. So let's start to, with lying on the right side or on your left, but for me it's on my right. So first thing, first come to lie down. On a, you can do this in bed if you like or on a couch or on the floor, carpet, on a yoga mat. Side lying, you, you could support your side here if you, feel, if you feel some tension in your, on either side of your pelvis uh, where sciatic pain would origin. So you might prop yourself up on a little t-shirt or something so that your spine is more straight. If it's okay to have a curved spine, you just lie down on the floor like I do and you start to touch the floor more and more fully on your side with the legs on top of each other. If you want to be more comfy, you would take a cushion like I do. Ah, this is so much nicer. But then um, a cushion where you don't have to balance, balance your legs so you can fully rest and you don't have any tension. You don't have to hold your legs in any way, so you can just rest. And then for the head, so some people would lie down like this, but this is not a position where you would sleep uh, mostly. But I mean, some people for sure are good enough to sleep in this position, but usually there's like a, some tension, some, some things going on, and we don't want our nervous system to be busy with that portion of ourselves. So just take a cushion and make a nice little space where you can snuggle your arm in. Snug, snug, Professor Snuggle, Snuggles. <laughs> and rest your head and that's our starting position. And the upper arm, just place it, place your upper arm anywhere. And the first movement is to move the shoulder. So bring your attention to your upper resting shoulder and start to move your shoulder forwards or what you perceive as being forwards. So forwards would be like the direction of your nose or the direction of the screen. Forwards and then let it come back again. And do this a couple of times. And, and it's not, a, as always, it's not, it's not a work, it's not work we, we do, it's not for strengthening and it's not stretching, it's not dance, it's an exploration 
organization, a way to be clear about the pathway, so which is forward, which is upward, which is downward, which is backward for the shoulder. So there's a clear forward. To make this even more clear, um, please lengthen your upper arm, but don't lock your elbow. Do not lock your elbow. It's, it's not about applying force, just lengthen your upper arm. Put your upper arm on top of your lower arm or somewhere around that so that your arm is really facing forwards, not at the height of your face and not of the height of your belly, but really forwards and then slide your hand forwards for, for, so, so it's really clear what is forward. So, so, that the, so it's really, really clear for the, for the uh, movement of the shoulder forwards. And once this is so clear, you can stand your hand, if you like, and just do the movement with the shoulder or you, because it's so easier, so, so much easier to have the arm long, so you don't have to think about anything. It's just very clear the direction forwards. And now, <clears throat> if you have done this movement a couple of times already, like being aware of what happens inside your body, you might have of yourself, you might have already noticed that your left that your upper knee also slides forward that you that you tell that you tend to to roll that you tend to roll more onto your belly when you do this movement and when you allow your head to roll so if you slide your shoulder forwards it's kind of a roll where your belly comes your chest comes closer to the floor right so let's ask the question of where we have to put the legs, the knees. So if you draw up your knees too much, maybe try that. Like if you really pull up your knees like a, like a hedgehog, <laughs> a hedgehog in side lying or <clears throat> a shrimp <coughs> on a barbecue, then and you, and you try to reach forward, you will probably notice it, the, the shoulder doesn't come forward as easily because it's a change in position change in organization configuration just biomechanics and then extend your hip joints knees a little bit or fully any anywhere so this <laughs> so when the knees are very long it's it's kind of easier to roll forwards but then it's not so easy to to rest in sideline because you don't have balance because you're you're losing that angle that gives you stability for sideline. So the truth is in the pudding. Truth is somewhere in between. <coughs> the hip joints not fully extended and not fully flexed. It's somewhere in between. It's just where you're comfy and continue with moving your shoulder forwards and backwards <clears throat> so and then th there's another thing uh, about your spine so does your spine round is it does it match this movement of bringing the shoulder blade uh, shoulder forward if your spine is really flexed and rounded like the hedgehog or the shrimp <laughs> the shrimp on the barbecue it's like the worst way to die is on the barbecue. And then, and the other way would be to being extended. <laughs> Why do I think like this? So then you extend yourself. So, so what, 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 what helps this movement? And of course, the answer, the answer is while you move your shoulder forwards, it's bring your, your sits bones. What's, what's in between your sit bones? Left sit bone, right sit bone, what's in between the sit bone? This part of yourself, a very important part, bring that backwards, like bring your sit bones backwards. So you arch a little bit and your hand forwards and your shoulder forwards, as opposed to rounding yourself. You know what I mean? And it's important that you 
experience that, that you feel that. It's not just me telling you, oh, arching matches better, this movement of reaching forwards than rounding. So, so but you need to feel it to ver not only verify it, but that your nervous system experiences the movement and can take the movement and verify it as being more efficient and thus can use it. Um, just for example. If, if you're driving a car or you watch somebody driving a car, of course we're, we're like backwards in the, in the seat like that. But if there's a situation that really requires your attention, you will, or <clears throat> you're looking for a parking spot, you will come up, you will not keep being flexed in your seat when you drive, but you come up and thus you arch a little bit and because you are arched you will be able to look around your, your shoulder better and you're more attentive. It gives you this, this edge over being rounded where you, your range of motion is limited, right? If you transfer this movement back to sitting, let's, let's come into a seated position. Up on a chair or on your couch. So as, as in, the, in, in this series, or in sitting, come to sit on the edge of the chair. Okay, I need to turn around. So because I was lying on my right side, so here was the floor. And then we were bringing the left shoulder forwards and the left knee was moving a little bit forwards. And now in sitting, it's easier to turn the head to the right. And also here in sitting, you can feel if you extend yourself, if you, if you become long, if you have this feeling of length, it will be easier to look over your shoulder. It will be much easier than when you, when you round yourself. <laughs> when you round yourself and try it and you start to have this Robert De Niro face. I can't, can't, really, can't really see, <laughs> see anything. You need, to, you need to extend yourself, you like become long and then, and yeah. Okay, so this was one of the ingredients of turning. Another ingredient I want to talk about is, another ingredient of turning would be side bending. But bend to which side? And for this, we go back to the side sitting lesson where it was so obvious which side it is. So if you want to look over your right shoulder, will side bending to the right or to the left help the movement? That's the question. So in side sitting, you have your right leg bent in front of you and your left leg bent behind you and so there's, if you have this configuration, it, it makes sense to turn to the right, to ro twist, rotate your head to the right, bring the left shoulder forward, but then around. So and if, if we would, so you, you see, uh, you feel, the, uh, to the side you're turning, your hip joint is closer to the floor than to the side you're turning away from. So if you're turning to the right, your left hip joint lifts off the floor, which means your left side becomes shorter, which means it's a side bending to the left. And in the other video, we did, we did this movement of side bending a little bit, and then the turning becomes better. You, you, you can practice that, you can feel that. So how do we do side bending in sitting on a chair? One of the ways, ways is the same way like in side sitting, like on the floor, you put, you put your left hand on top of your... So if it's the turn to the right, you put your left hand on top of your head, head left hand on top, and then you, you help with your... You bring your left elbow closer towards your left hip joint. So of course side bending you could just do it with the head but then there's so much freedom that, and, and, and we, we can't really find 
we can't really improve because that's something that's available to us all day long and if we do something we're so used to we have no chance of discovering anything new it's like when you stare at the same thing or you need to change your perspective you need to introduce something new some new flavor just a new spice something new and then wow we open up and we start to see what's the elusive obvious the things that were always in front of us but we couldn't see them so a new a, like a new ingredient would be just to would be just to put the <clears throat> left hand on your head so we have this little package and then introduce the side bending or you could interlace your hands and put both hands on top and so it's a even bigger constraint and if you if you, you can feel that this this so the side bending suddenly is not only in your neck and like the top vertebra but if you have like both hands interlaced on top of your head the side bending needs to occur somewhere in your thoracic spine and a little bit up in your in your what is it thoracic t-spine cervical spine so the movement is distributed so your left side becomes shorter the ribs on that side come closer to each other while as the ribs on the other side they need to open up to make this happen so nice isn't it this needs to happen <clears throat> so this is top down approach a bottom up approach would be to lift your Oh, left buttocks so how, how would you do this how would you lift your buttocks off the chair so uh, <clears throat> the rainforest is being cut down so you you you're, you're like a tree that <laughs> falls falls to the side which ev eventually will lift your other the buttocks on the other side but that's not what we're going for we going for the bamboo garden with the wind and the nice sound of the bamboo leaves that bends the bamboo which is your spine so you can press with your with your left foot against the floor so your head your head stays on top of your buttocks and turns uh, side bends so that's that side bending from below another way to side bend is to take one of my books or if you have three of them even better and put that under one side of your buttocks so you're already side bended and you can just relax <clears throat> my book will do all the work or you keep the book there and you do a little bit of turning which means your left knee will come forwards but you're already more in a side bend position because you are propped up uh, with my book So then there was the question of where you put your arms. So you can put in sitting, you could put your arms on your knees. Or you could put your arms on your shoulders. <clears throat> which divorces, separates your shoulder girdle more from your pelvic girdle. Because before we had the connection through the arms but now it's just a connection through the spine or like in side sitting you could lean on one hand and lead with the other hand to turn then we had all these variations with the eyes so instead of just having three big areas that rotate or twist shoulder, uh, pelvic girdle, shoulder girdle, head we can also have another level, the eyes so you turn to one side and you just return the eyes so you turned and instead of so you, you your pelvis is turned your shoulder girdle is turned your head is turned and you only return the eyes which will free up a lot because these are small things we like we are not crude crude animals we are, we are not we are not like <clears throat> we're not crude or um uh, raw we are, very, we are very refined like the human brain is quite a refined thing maybe smaller than the brain of an elephant but still 
still we have a sense of orientation and we can find our way and uh, we can uh, move uh, small parts if you, even if you just move your eyes in such a funny situation it will do a lot to your organization and how the brain produces new pathways for you for us okay then it's time to take out my book <laughs> wow so this feels like a flat tire, doesn't it? <laughs> so, and when you turn, turn now, it's, it just feels... Oh my God, the, right, <laughs> the, the turn to the right is so much easier now than the turn to the left. And I have been working to the left for so many times. All right, that improved. Uh, another fun way to go into side bending. So if it's a side bend, if it's a shortening of the left side is to move the chair <coughs> or to move yourself on the chair so that your, your right Botox is in the air. Make sure the chair doesn't tip over. So that's safety first. So your right Botox can, the right side of my Botox is in the air. The right leg is in the air. And then you can sink your, you can just let your, your hip drop towards the floor, which will lengthen your side and shorten, shorten the other side. That's a fun way to side bend from down, bottom up, but we can also add top down and put everything together. So this is like a really side bending and sitting. Wow. So we are really, really bending, 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 and then come up to a, level position and back drop you can drop your hip and move this packet shoulder head arm packet your left elbow towards your left sits bone or yeah so the left side really shortens and <clears throat> it's very tempting to make that into a stretch but it shouldn't be a stretch it just should be the movement so maybe stop before the stretch All right, and then come back onto your chair. Just sit for a second. <laughs> and then we try again to look. For me, in this, in this video, in this session, it's the right side to turn the head to the right. Hmm. And no surprises there, it improved. And the left one didn't get worse either. So actually, now both sides are pretty good. So these were a couple of fresh ideas. All right, so. Boom, 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 boom. So I hope that was interesting to you. Hope you had a good session with me. And you can, you can use these things in your in your life you can benefit from them i hope so um yeah let's practice together um, <clears throat> thank you for watching looking forward to our next video see you in the next video Considering everything we've talked about so far, about twisting and turning to look over one shoulder, I want to ask you a question, like a final graduation question. When you're sitting on the floor, cross-legged, 
with your right leg in front of your left leg. So the right leg is in front of the left leg. Does it make more sense to turn to your right or to turn to your left? And also explain why those two directions will not be the same, do not have the same possibilities for movement. What are the key differences?